trees are like diarists. They contain within their growth rings a story about how they have responded to the conditions that they have grown in. Every year it puts on a new ring of um, cells. So we can see them if we cut down a tree. So if we get hold of a cross section, every year it puts on a new ring just underneath the bark surface. So the bark is actually way out here. So the most recent ring is the one that's under here. Now the width of that ring is going to vary depending on how well or how poorly the tree grows in the year. And that's going to depend on a lot of factors like the soil moisture, the sunlight, how well it's grown in previous years as well. So if we take a cross section of a tree or a sample from a tree and we look at the growth rings, we can start to unravel the stories of the past environment, the past climate from those tree rings. We use something like this. This is a cora. It's a very small one. One of my nice colleagues calls it a lady cora. But what it essentially is, is an increment borer. Push that into the tree and then we screw it in. Once it's into the tree, we take this little spatula and pop it in on the top, back off half a turn, and we can pull out a five millimetre plug of wood that's going to run from the outside of a tree as close to the centre as we've been able to get it. So we have three types of tree ring sample in the lab. The main species we work on is kauri, so Agathis australis, which grows in the upper North Island, north of 38 degrees south. And you have your living trees, so trees that you can go and see in the forest today, like at Trouncin, Waipua, or in Ekoromandal. We have kauri that turns up in buildings, so that was used to build the villas, the bungalows of Auckland, and the Northland, boats, bridges. So those are all, they were all once trees, and we can take samples from the wood and look at the growth rings from those. And then the other source of wood is the subfossil kauri, so the trees that were buried in swamps. Some of these are Holocene age, so they were growing any time during the last, say, seven or 8,000 years, and they were buried in peat swamps. And some of them are ancient kauri, so were, they were growing, say, between 22 and more than 60,000 years ago doesn't mean they were growing for 20,000 years, just in that time span they were alive. Okay. So what we do in the lab here is we collect samples from these different sources, so our living tree cores, our building timbers, our subfossil wood, and we are involved in measuring the width of the annual growth rings on these samples. Now trees that have grown at the same time and have experienced very similar conditions are going to have very similar growth patterns. So in a year when conditions are fabulous for cowrie growth, giving maybe lots of sunshine, the water's just right, they'll all put on a wide ring. And in years when the trees are very, very stressed, maybe there's just too much water or there's not enough water or something's going on, they'll put, all put on a narrow ring. As they grow, what you get is a pattern of wide and narrow rings building up in time but that pattern is unique, it's never ever repeated. So you've got things of a unique pattern, but it's common to trees that have grown at the same time. We can then take dead wood, we don't know when the trees were alive, but by measuring the rings and comparing the growth patterns, we can fit them in. So we can take a piece of wood like this, you can see all the growth rings going across here. Okay, this tree was buried in a comes from a tree that was buried in a swamp. And by measuring the growth rings here and cross-matching the pattern, we could work out this tree was alive in the first millennium AD. This is the common pattern or the average pattern of tree growth for all our cowrie trees that we've sampled that were living from building timbers and from subfossil trees. It's um, so you can see patterns of wide and narrow rings, and it goes from 2002 continuously back to 1724 BC.